with all the other content out there for Valentine's Day 2018, I thought it'd be a real smart idea to get a jump on 2019. Three days after, get ready folks, Valentine's Day 2019 top five movies to get busy that are romantic and stuff. Please enjoy. Grab that for me, would you, babe? No, it's for you. Girl, don't make me put my foot in your ass. Nineteen ninety one's Sleeping with the Enemy, directed by Joseph Rubin, starring Julia Roberts and Patrick Bergen, is a nice little rom com. Roberts plays Runaway Bride, a ne'er do well daredevil, madly in love with her husband, Patrick Bergen, who plays Frank Booth. Baby wants to fuh an industrialist will stop at nothing to be with her. In true rom-com fashion, Robert suffers a life-threatening injury that causes her to lose her memory and transport her at least, like, a hundred miles away without her memories. Or doting husband, she instinctively begins prostituting and stuff. Quickly, she finds a foothold in the Memphis market and finds enough financial support to open a pizza place. Runaway Bride's Magic Pizza. And then it hits her. She is Runaway Bride. She is married. She loves her husband. And is getting kind of tired of the whole game. Back in Des Moines, Frank frantically freels frustration as his letter writing and picketing campaigns failed to turn up any leads. Not to mention his hunger strike, arguably wasting time and accomplishing nothing. Can Julia make it back to Patrick? Enough, we live in a whorehouse, but she's a Jew. She works on the Sabbath, she goes with Romans on the Sabbath. She broke Moses' law, she dies. 1991's Fried Green Tomatoes is a sweet song of sweet southern romance with some odd supernatural elements. Directed by John Avnet and starring Kathy Bates, Mary Stuart Masterson, and Jessica Tandy. The four friends live on a plantation in Antebellum Pulaski, do their nails, braid each other's hair, and trade bras. Oh, and talk about boys. The four are inseparable, and after one long night of dinner and dance, share a steamy union of sorts. When the two pretty ones go off and get hitched, Oldie and Tubby feel their bond weakening. Then that night, a group of racist ghosts come and start whipping all the black people and Mexicans. The two unmarried spinsters gather up their hexing accoutrement and rally their two lost friends. One is rebellious, the other just fell down some stairs or got hit by a train or something. Even with their combined powers, will the quartet complete their ritual and banish those kooky ghosts once and for all? Also, the old lady instigated the sex stuff. It means we're not making forward progress like real grown-up adults live in our lives because I'm married to a gambling junkie who won't listen. Charlene, get in the fucking car. What am I doing in this rat bastard situation? You're not! What do you want from me? Leave the bank book and the car keys in the kitchen on your way out the door. Now 1991's Ooh, what a hot year for hot romance. Not Without My Daughter, directed by Ryan Gilbert and starring Sally Field and Alfred Molina. For some reason, Sally Field plays Pakistani mother Betty Mahmoodi. Alfred Molina pulls off the Indian, whose name is just Moody. These two are old loves who share an old flame for one another and a daughter. In a You've Got Mail style romance, the two reconnect via MSN Messenger and decide to meet up. 
but Moody lives in Damascus as a whip-toting archaeologist fighting Nazis and commies, while well, she is a writer for a small Nova Scotia newspaper. But so dedicated to work, the two just can't find the time. Also, the Canadian feds think Molina is a terrorist or something. In fact, the two met originally when Molina was a warlord in tribal Kurdistan. The two made love atop a mountain of heroin, rocket-propelled grenades, and semtars. Can the two find the time for love? Can the little girl handle the burglars? Will Sally Field remember that she left her daughter in Algeria? All alone? At home? They're in school. It's Saturday, honey. School's not in on Saturday. My school is... 1993's What's Love Got to Do With It, directed by Gibson Bryan, starring Bassett Angela as Turner Tina, and Fishburne Larry as Miller Clean Tyrone, as Fishburne Larry. All grown up, he was rebuilt. We had the technology. Thrust back into life, Tyrone has been combined with a Cyberdyne cybernetic chassis linked to his central nervous system by way of gems and crystals of all types. Is he man or machine, or both? One thing's for sure, he is a love machine type 472LV427 with a longing love to sing. So he finds the down and out Turner working as lounge singer at a seedy juke joint. He begs her to teach him the business and how to sing, of course. He lost his original vocal cords in Nam, and his cybernetic learning vocal cords had yet to learn to sing. After many nights of him blasting his emergency siren below her window, she begrudgingly agrees to teach him the ways of the Force, and un unknowingly agrees to give him her heart. Also unbeknownst to her, despite his classification, the love machine type 472LV427 had no love 4.8 update and was incapable of having emotions. Can her sweet soul sound sway his electric mounds? It's that haircut that looks awful. You want the truth, honey? That's the worst mistake you ever made. 1980's The Shining, directed by Jonathan T. Waternoose, and starring Shelley Duvall, Jack Nicholson, and Scatman Crothers as Danny. Wendy is a newly single mother whose longtime boyfriend left after the birth of their son Danny, a young Addison's disease suffering Benjamin Button. She has no job, no experience, a laundry list of medications to buy, so she shacks up with Jack Nicholson, a misunderstood author caretaker with a troubled past. The two share no affections, but the relationship is mutually beneficial. Wendy gets a roof over her head and all the drugs her son and her need. Jack gets someone to perform his ancient Japanese plays for him. This goes on for some time, but one winter, the two get snowed in, and when emotions run high, love finds a way. But is Wendy ready for a complete geisha lifestyle? And is Jack ready to be the father for a 73-year-old black big band musician? When them Hong Kong flicks came out, every nigga in the world had to have a 45, and they ain't want one, they want two, because all them niggas want to be the killer. But what them flicks don't tell you and what they don't know, that a 45 got a serious fucking jamming problem. 